Hello everyone, I'm Marina and that's a Cromel School. I'm screaming inside. Stop making fat nails. In today's video, I will show you how to align the nail plate with the base coat without excess volume. How not to ruin the look of the nails. Let's start. Here are today's nails. When I saw them, I thought, why on earth do the tags align the nails like this? They look fat. These nails were done in a nail salon, and I wonder why the base coat layer is so thick. One nail has broken since the architecture is incorrect. The middle nail on the left hand is curved. Let's check the thickness with a special tool. The free edge is 2 mm thick. Well, that's a lot. We need to remove the coating now. One of the most common mistakes is leaving too much of the previous base coat. When tacks remove only the color coating to save up some time. But base coat leftovers leave extra volume. Removing the length, we can read a nail story like a tree, with lots of layers of various base coats, colors, and etc. To remove all the excess volume, we need to smooth out the surface with a drill bit. For this, I use a green carbide drill bit and make long moves from right to left. Our main guideline is the nail edge. Check its thickness. Our task is to keep only 10 to 20% of the old coverage. If there are no liftings, of course. If there are some, then remove the base coat completely. If you are a beginner and afraid to damage the nail plate, then keep a thin layer and remove it with a nail file. I proceed with the manicure. Push the cuticle with a pusher and clean out all the pterygium. This step will save us some time while working with a knee file, since most of the pterygium gets removed this way. To file off the length, I find the shortest nail and start filing with it. I can see that the ring nail is too arched, so I'd better start filing with lower parallels. If we file it from the top view, we can easily file them away completely and the nail will turn out lifted. I touch up the leftover base coat layer and mat the natural nail plate for better bonding. My model's middle nail is naturally curved. But we can always fix this with filing. And using harder materials for nail strengthening. Make sure to find the central axis, going through three phalanges of the finger and through the center of the cuticle. Then it will be easier to file the free edge. Before using a knee file, I apply some powder to dry up my model's wet cuticle. I brush it off and lift up the cuticle with a diamond flame drill bit. Working with wet cuticles, we should always use red drill bits and carefully process the sinuses to avoid cuts. I cut off the cuticle with small pieces. I watch my model's reaction to make sure it doesn't hurt. Since the cuticle is thin, we can see how red it got on the middle finger, though there is no cut. On such wet nails, I always apply a dehydrator first to dry up the nail blade a bit more. Next comes a primer, for better bonding between the nail and the coating. We apply it only on the natural nail part. There is no point in applying it over the base coat. To check plasticity of the nails, we can press on the free edge. My model's nails are thin, so I will use a rubber base coat. I apply a thin layer as an underlay first. There are big cracks on the thumb. Since the architecture was incorrect, it's another reason why it's so important to not just apply a thick base coat layer but align it correctly.
we will have to repair these cracks. First, I apply the same rubber base coat. Then on the wet base coat layer, I lay out a tiny piece of nail silk. I drown it in the base coat using tweezers. And then soak it with some base coat using another brush. It should become clear. I will extend the index nail using paper forms. I cut out the central part to make sure that the form fits the nail. I also need to make cuts and cut out the ears for the form to get pressed well around the finger. I will use this clear acrogel for the extension. I form the underlay first using a natural brush and some acrogel aligning liquid. Well, sculpted nails have a perfect architecture compared to the natural ones, where the transverse arch often gets twisted. Index nails often grow downwards, so we need to lift up the curved tip. I'm using the same clear acrogel. I build up the missing sidewall on the middle nail. This repair stage won't take too much time, but the nails will look absolutely different. Your client will surely appreciate it and come back to the nail tech who knows how to deal with complex nails. To lift up the curved tip, I place the file under the nail plate and file a straight line. Lower parallels get lifted up and look straight. I file an almond shape on the tip from the top view. Done with the repair stage, now let's proceed with the nail plate alignment. It's our new segment experiment. I suggest we try out three base coats and choose the hardest one that will do for our nails. We will need some glossy paper sheets, base coats, and of course, a UV lamp. Apply a thin layer of each of the base coats the same amount you normally use for the alignment. Cure it in the lamp for the required time, minus 30 seconds. Then remove the base coat from the palette using tweezers and start banding it. If it bends and doesn't crack, then the base coat is rubber. If it cracks, but not right away, that means that it is strengthening. It will both strengthen and follow the natural nail curve. And if the base coat cracks right away, that means that it's hard. It doesn't mean it's bad. It will be perfect for aligning long nails. The second base coat is the hardest, so I will use it to align today's nails. And if you want to see more experiments, give this video a big thumbs up and then this segment will continue in the next video. I continue doing the manicure and aligning the nail bleed. The free edge part is already thick enough. So we will just need to build up central and cuticle zones. Don't apply too much here. Turn the finger over to let the gel flow to the highest point. We can lift up the fridge for the gel to flow to the stress zone. The tip shouldn't be too thick. I spread the material with a thin brush.
for the nail not to look wide. Make sure that the gel doesn't flow on the sides. So before curing it in the lamp, I turn the nail over, wait for the gel to flow to the center, and only then sand it to cure. Due to the volume in the central part, the nail will look narrower visually. I wipe off the tacky layer on the thumb and touch up the areas with the silk popping out. Since we have lifted up the curved tips, there is some extra thickness that we need to file out. I'm using a thin ceramic drill bit that does the job here. To keep the nail from peeling, I apply a thin base coat layer and send the hand to cure in the lamp like this. Next, I apply this gorgeous ultramarine shade. It is one of the trendiest festive colors. I want to add stamping on the middle and ring nails, imitating a tiger's fur. Just in time for the year coming. I outline the borders and then fill in this area in one layer. I add stickers to the blank areas. Apply a matte top coat, cure, remove the tacky layer. I clean up the stamping paint leftovers with acetone. And to spice it up, let's add some silver glitter lines. So why do the nails get too thick sometimes? Due to the lack of experience, I know three great nail alignment techniques. There is a detailed video on my channel, so make sure to check it out to avoid these mistakes. I wish you all success in your work. Good luck! Bye-bye!